Let's begin chapter 7. The required readings for 7.1 and 7.2 are found on pages 382 through 385 and 388 through 395. For practice, we will just complete Exploration 7.2. Chapter 7 introduces us to paired data, which is a new type of analysis from what we have done previously. In paired data, we still have two groups, but the groups are dependent upon each other. An observational unit in one group is paired with or tied to an observational unit in the other. When this happens, the two values in the pair are related to or dependent upon one another, so the groups are said to be dependent. This allows for a built-in comparison within each pair. That built-in comparison allows us to remove the individual variability by looking at the difference in score for each individual. So for each pair, we will find the difference between the two and then analyze those differences. This is a key feature of paired data, that we're taking the difference between the two values for each pair and that that difference is meaningful and helps to answer our research question. Something like looking at a reaction time before and after drinking alcohol is a meaningful number. The difference between a mother's IQ and the IQ of her son can help us look at how IQs are related genetically. Or seeing the average amount of TV watch daily for a spouse and their partner can also give us a meaningful number for a difference. However, something like height and weight of an individual are two measurements on the same person, which sounds like it's a paired data. But the difference between an individual's height and weight is not a meaningful number. Those values are not measured on the same scale. So this type of data would be analyzed differently. We talked about that in chapter 10, using scatter plots and regression, instead of a paired data analysis like we'll investigate in chapter 7. Reducing that individual variability helps to improve inferences like we've always talked about. Less variability will result in narrower confidence intervals and smaller p-values when the null hypothesis is false. In other words, more power. There are two types of paired designs. The most common is paired with repeated measures. In this situation, each observational unit is measured twice. An example of this is measuring a person before and after some event, like a pre-course and post-course test. We could also use a paired design with matching. Here, the paired values are actually from different observational units, but those observational units are meant to be paired based on some characteristic or set of characteristics, like potential confounding variables, that are similar between the two observational units. In this way, Observational units will be as similar as possible, except with respect to the explanatory variable. For example, if we wanted to study the relationship between smoking and weight, we could find two people that are of the same sex, with similar diets, exercise regimens, and other potential confounding variables, but one smokes and the other does not. Those two people are matched on several characteristics except the one we are interested in, smoking, and therefore the difference in weight between the two people can be analyzed. The most important thing in identifying an observational design is to first decide if the data is paired or not. To help, decide if an observational, one, observational unit in one group should be related to exactly one observational unit in the other. Then, if the data is paired, think about one observational unit. Is that observational unit measured twice? repeated measures, or is it matched with a different observational unit that is similar matching? Paired designs can be used in either an experiment or an observational study. Both examples mentioned with the previous slide were examples of observational studies with a pre and post test score and looking at weight differences between smokers and non-smokers. With matching, we can randomly assign which of the match set is in each group because they are distinct observational units that are similar. 
How could we randomly assign in a repeated measures design? We would have to randomize the order of the treatments or randomly decide which treatment or which measurement occurs first and which occurs second. Now that we understand paired data designs, let's discuss how to analyze these data using a simulation-based approach. With paired data, we will only analyze the pairwise differences. In other words, for each pair, we will find the difference between the two measurements. Then, we have a single list of quantitative values, the differences, which we will analyze. So we will find the mean of the differences. Be very careful with your wording. The mean of the differences indicates that there are lots of differences that we will find the mean of. One mean of multiple differences. A difference in means, discussed in Chapter 6, indicates that there are two separate means which we will subtract to find the difference between. One difference of two means. Since this is a single quantitative variable we are analyzing, we use the same notation as a single mean, but with a subscript D to denote that we are taking means of differences. The null hypothesis is that the mean of the difference is zero, or that the group or treatment does not matter, and the alternative is based on the research question, as always. So how do we do a simulation test? We start by assuming the same thing that we assume in every hypothesis test, that the null hypothesis is true, which is that group doesn't matter, or that the differences for each pair are zero on average. How did we simulate group doesn't matter in chapter five and six? Well, we wrote the response variable on cards, mixed them up, and dealt them into the same size groups as before to create one sample, which assumes the null. But here we have paired data, and those pairs need to stay together. So we can't just arbitrarily switch around the groups. Think about what we would need to do to keep the pairs together, but assume that the difference in each pair is zero on average. Work through the exploration, which will walk you through the steps. Also view a wrap up for these sections, which will give a nice animation to understand this process.